Okay, Peter Switzer here, broadcasting from Melbourne, and I think we've overcome our technological problems. Noel, can you hear me? Absolutely, Peter. <laughs> it's great to hear you talk to me, mate. I'm here. All right, I did say earlier to, the, to our very patient viewers that I wanted to talk to you about the big four banks in particular, yeah. because there was a story in the Fin Review raising question marks over the banks and all that sort of stuff. I wanted to know what Macquarie Bank's view is on our big four banks now, so take it away. Look, we think they're pretty good um, investment in the medium, short and long term, and, and there's a couple of really key reasons here. One is that the structural overlay that exists in the Australian banking sector in Australia is unique in the world. So you've got this whole role here of the way the government uh, has supported banks and the, the four pillars process. And then what you've got with each of these banks is they've actually very, very experienced in their field, and they have very, very clear strategies. And what we've in year after year after year is pretty good execution. And then the third part of that is we've really got some pretty good leadership across this space. And so there's a nice competitive element amongst the big four, even though they're kind of like, they're kind of like four kids in the same family in some strange way. But each of them has a lot of skill set. And that skill set really does create that competitive dynamic between each of them. And now that their strategies are kind of looking a little bit different, I think that the future for the Australian banking sector is pretty good. Whether, the big question is, Peter, I don't know whether the banks can repeat the performance of the last 12 months over the next 12 months. I think that's probably the only question, mate. Can they do as well? But do they really need to? No, exactly right, Noel. And my view is, even if you said to me, well, Peter, and, and I have talked to some of your, you know, your strategists there, and, and, and they will point to other companies that will probably have more upside going forward. But I, I'm thinking about the kind of person who watches this show, they might have bought the banks when, you know, five or ten dollars ago and they think are thinking, oh gee, I'm reading stories, particularly in the Financial Review on the weekend, which raised doubts about the you know the quality of the banks if if there was a bit of a a, 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 a series of serious economic troubles. So my, for my way of thinking, I think they're very good businesses and sure they might go off the boil if another crash comes, but I don't know what you're like, no, but I'd be inclined to buy them if they went off the boil during a, another crash, which ultimately will happen. I'm not even sure that some of them aren't a good buy at the moment. Now, they've had a good run. Um, NAB and Westpac particularly have probably still got a little bit of ways to go because their strategies are a little bit different. They've got the highest dividend yield. They've probably got the most upside. But, but I don't see this Armageddon scenario. This kind of strikes me as a little bit 2012 to me. And mm. all the fact, all the things that have gone into the banks, if you look at the way that they've restructured their capital compared to their global peers, if you look at the, the regulatory environment put together by uh, successive federal governments, and they've all been very supportive of a strong banking sector. It's, you know, it's a bit like Medicare in Australia, a strong banking sector in Medicare. You kind of just don't muck with it if you're a politician, do you? It's one of those things that's a pillar of the country. And I just don't see this worst case scenario. Sure, a few of them could see their earnings come back, but I really don't see um, I just don't see that level of risk and I think that's why they appeal to investors. I've got to say, Peter, I wouldn't care if the banks didn't move one penny from this price on. The yield they're paying, if I was a retiree, I'd be pretty comfortable and I'd sleep pretty well at night. Yeah, I'm, I'm completely with you. Now let's look at the market today, mate. A nice rise. Uh, is it because temporarily the debt ceiling problem is to one side. What was the, 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 the feeling you got for why the market was up so well today? Oh, a couple of reasons. There's, uh, if you have a look at uh, uh, both Tokyo and Hong Kong, are pretty strongly. I think there's a bit of a sigh of relief around the world that um, the US Congress didn't finally commit complete suicide, uh, partial suicide, but not complete. Um, so they mm. live to fight another day. Um, I, look, I would have thought that we could be, we should be in for a bit more sustained rally than this. I mean, it's been a good day. But really, nothing extraordinary. Uh, I think the bit that was surprising uh, and pleasing was the breadth of it. You saw the banks up. You saw ANZ go somewhere new for the first time. You saw really mm. good response out of the major miners and even some of the smaller ones. And I think it was the breadth of it, even the retailers. So I think there was this sense of confidence back in with some of the big stocks. And I hope we see that for a bit more. But we still haven't seen anywhere what we should, we should be seeing with this enormous liquidity that exists out there. And we really haven't seen, like, um, a, a rush. If you look at some, you know, I, I look at our clients' portfolios all the time, and you know, some of them they just go up nice and steadily, but it's not stellar, it's not 2007 or 6 or anything like that, so it's, it's steady as she goes, uh, and, mm. and I think with that, um, I think there's probably a fair, there's certainly plenty of capacity to go further, um, whether we will or not. And the other thing, of course, there's still a lot of people who got this wrong, uh, and they continually get it wrong, wrong, wrong. There's lots of short covering every week. Every week we look at it, and that's the other part of the story.
Okay. Well, well now let's have a look at you know, um, what the target you guys have for the ASX 200 for the end of the year. Because you know, I, I often joke on this program that you can pretty well rely on a good old Santa Claus rally coming out of the USA. And I, I guess I'm also thinking, well, they'll have, they'll have some debt issues in December which could roll over into January. You still think Santa Claus might come to town for the stock market? I reckon Santa Claus might come a little early. Um, and it probably would be, I think, November actually could be a fairly interesting month. Um, mm. Mainly because I think that uh, the people will put this recent experience in the US a little bit behind them. Uh, I think we might see some better data than expected out of China. And I think the other, the wild card, and you know, we don't really talk enough about it, is the recovery in Europe is, is really starting to build off, admittedly off really, really low and awful levels in some places, but it's starting mm. to build a little bit momentum. Now, once you put all those th three things together, I think people might then get a, start to get a little bit ahead of the news and we might see that. So we might see a bit of a rally going to November and then perhaps into Christmas, Santa Claus might be a little bit mean and he might put a few presents back in the bag <laughs> and come back early in the new year. So I, I think it'll be sooner than later and we might have a little rise up and then in, then in the new year, as we always do, we'll drop off a little bit. So um, I think we're in for some interesting times. Look, we're only 5% short of what our target is for the year and um, I think that'll be, that'll be eas easily achieved sometime over the next uh, three to four months. Okay, now I've, I'm talking my own book here, Noel, but I, <laughs> early in the year I went for 5,500 in the ASX 200. Am I being too courageous or will, do you think we might see that number? Oh, I think you might pay yourself out. <laughs> I, think, I, think, <laughs> I think we should get there. Um, look, I, I think that, look, that's not really a big ask. And if you look at where the interest is in this market, it is in the ones that move the market. So it's BHP and Rio. If they have a couple of good weeks, that's good. And then if you see the banks. Now, most of those uh, stocks don't have to move a heck of a lot. Now, BHP and Rio can quite easily put on uh, 3 or 4% each themselves in a very short space of time. And, and you're there. Um, if the banks just add 1 or 2%, then that whole index moves. So all the action we're seeing is at the front end of the index. It's the top 10. And uh, it doesn't need to move a long way, I think, to hit your target and uh, possibly hit ours as well. OK. It's intriguing that you say that you're expecting some better news out of China. What's the main driver for that confidence? I think that the I think it's been overdone, uh, and I think people sort of view that China was a little bit uh, has been a little bit um, uh, overly overly bearish in the sense of they think that economic activity is pulled back further. If they still do an eight percent rate or seven and a half percent rate of growth, that's still fairly good demand on our resources, and I think that's that's partly what we might see. We haven't seen a lot of tinkering around with the domestic economy, and we haven't seen those benefits come through. But I think most people have got their numbers a little bit wrong on China. And the, perhaps the best metric to look at is the price of iron ore. Uh, it's just staying consistently high. We're seeing some better prices for coal and other commodities. Um, and I think it's just probably um, everybody's just got a little bit too negative several months back. And th they'll come back to reality. Fantastic. Now, one so. last question bef before we go, mate, is that, you know, Macquarie has a, a beachhead in the USA. Uh, Congress uh, certainly spooked the market there for a while. Uh, there's another uh, debt um, uh, challenge. Uh, well, basically, we're, we're waiting for the budgetary committee of the Congress to get back early December. And if nothing positive happens, there could be another shutdown in early January and a deadline problem in February. What are you guys thinking is more likely to happen over the next few months in relation to the Congress? Well, from, from what we hear through our various contacts is that there might be a few people taken out the back room uh, between now and Christmas and actually sort of taught the fundamentals of, um, of US politics. Uh, and I think that the expectation is that by Christmas they should be a lot further down the process and not go through this again. I think for who, whoever pushes this process in the new year, I think it'll be political disaster because there are elections next year. And, uh, the, and the public won't forget it. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll forget once, maybe even forgive a little bit, but not twice and not to continually go back there. So I think there'll be a bit of a backlash and I think a lot of the wiser, older, saner heads will actually prevail between now and Christmas and move this towards a solution. And that may mean everybody gives up a little bit, but I don't think too many folks in the US want to go back there. If they do, um, it's all bets off. And I think w what you might see is, a, is a, a credit downgrade or something like that that'll bash heads together. I, I think if Congress doesn't do it, um, other, other factors will come to play and do it. All right, Noel, thanks for joining us on the program. My pleasure, Pete. Have a Noel nice H from Macquarie. See you, mate. Coming up on the show, we've got the CEO of uh, Super Retail Group, Peter Bertels, the CEO of Bank of Queensland, Stuart Grimshaw, and the number one ad man in Melbourne, none other than Harold Mitchell. Back up.